In the field of geology, anytime we want to know something that may happen in the future, we look to the past and utilize a proxy. In this case, we have a location around here that allows us to do such a thing, so we go and collect samples there, bring them back, take them into the lab, and utilize what we can from the sample to actually constrain how fast climate change may actually be occurring in our local area. Our location in particular is in western Fresno County, close to Mendota, just as you're getting into the foothills there. In this location at the time of, uh, that we are interested in was a, a large open ocean ultimately, so we had a lot of sediments pouring off the continent into the ocean, and those records preserve uh, the processes that were going on at that time. In my particular uh, project within the greater collective project that we're working on, I look at biodiversity of microorganisms. Uh, I'm looking at 4M specifically, and what 4Ms do is when they grow, die, and cycle within a very rapid time interval, it allows us to see changes through time based on the distribution of those organisms in a given section. We have a very uh, finely sampled section, which allows us to view these changes on a fine scale. And using that, we can begin to constrain climate changes through time on what is, in, in geologic time, almost instantaneous. I do work by myself a lot in the lab, but there are times when we come together. I will meet with Mara weekly, and we discuss you know, progress, things like that. Um, she might have some new information for me and I'm like, okay, great, thanks. You know, I needed to know this and I'll tell her what I've been doing and she's like, maybe you should try this. So it's good to have that communication. But yeah, we, we actually do focus on, on all three of those, a big group, smaller groups, and then individuals. So it's a, it's a good way to run as well because when you're doing the scientific method, you might have someone think of something and then show it to the group and be like, you know what, that's a thing we never considered. That's a great idea. We should probably, uh, you know, move along with this idea. By being in an active research environment, you learn uh, about the scientific method in its most true form, ultimately. Uh, you can only learn so much in a classroom setting where everything's controlled. You know the outcome and you know, you know how you're starting off. Uh, in the case of our experiment, we started from scratch, collected the samples, brought them in, and we really, based on other papers, we had a, a kind of general idea of what to expect, but you know, as you go through, you run to snags and things that come along and you learn to adapt and overcome. In addition to being in uh, this environment, it shows you, or teaches you really, how to work with other people because not everyone thinks the same, not everyone does things the same way. So you'll learn you know, a good amount of uh, teamwork. You might not know what you wanna do, so in whatever field that you take, you're gonna wanna you know, uh, take a sample of all the professors you have, know how they teach in class because that's probably how they're gonna transfer that to a lab environment. Um, once you do that, you're gonna wanna look up their research, make sure that your interests coincide with what they're doing, because if you're going to get involved with research and it's going to get technical, you're going to want to, you know, actually like what they're doing and, and be able to work with that individual. And then from there, you really want to, you know, make sure they know you a little bit and then contact them, ask them for a space. When you're trying to talk to a professor and you want to get into that, you know, field and you're like, oh, I really want to do this, but just, oh, I don't know them very well. What are they going to think of just a random undergrad? But uh, in this case, it's really something that, you know, if you know that you want to do this and you know that you like the person or can work with the person and you like their research, it is uh, in your best interest to actually get out there and really do that. If you want to go to grad school, you're going to want to do undergraduate research. That's, you know, a minimum because you really want to know how a lab environment works and the undergrad research will give you the, that opportunity to see if this is really what I want to pursue. I have to say in my experience personally, it's great when you have the knowledge of what you're talking about. You've done the research, you've uh, gone to a conference and you see people that have been publishing uh, papers in your field for maybe even longer than you've been alive. And this is just my experience last December where I actually went, presented a poster and they came up and talked to me about the work I was doing, which for me was like, oh wow, this is the person I've, you know, I've read five of their papers and here they are talking to a person and having the confidence to do that and say, yeah, and you know, discuss your project just, as rewarding as I've felt doing this whole thing. So definitely give it a shot if you're even, you know, if you feel overwhelmed, just it's worth, it's worth this time, <laughs> if any, you know, to go out there and really make your voice heard.